Good hard Tuesday practice, physical. I uh, thought the defense did some really nice things. They were very, thought they were sharp. Offense was okay. I got to get a little sharper, but still had a good day. Uh, but I got to get ready for Wake, got to be ready to play. Wake does some different things. I mean, they always well coached, different things on offense, did a lot of different formations, different blitzes on defense, and a lot of pressures and different things in the past. They've always pressured us and expecting that again. And uh, got to be able to handle those things and, and still be balanced and do what we got to do. But got to be ready to mentally play. And that's always a uh, good game up there. Jim Grove does a great job with those guys. So, but not a bad day today. Good solid work day. Do you have no Brooks again? No. Any update? Day to day. Do you have to prepare any more given that they like have been shown a propensity to run a lot of trick plays and do kind of crazy yeah. stuff? Do you prepare anything? With we do that all the time. We do, we do. We prepare the same for all those teams all the time. We work on those things a lot. Yeah. And spend a lot of time in that area. Who's mainly getting uh, reps with the ones with Brooks being out? Uh, Keelan's in there doing. He, Keelan and Nate. Nate's, Nate's back then. We go dime and nickel situation. He comes down and Keelan goes in. Okay. Like we did in the game. Just right. like we did okay. in the game. So there's a chance that you could have two true freshman safeties. I mean, two very good freshman mm -hmm. safeties, but. That were the other night. Yeah. <laughs> you missed that the other night? No, you no. weren't paying attention? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not worried. <laughs> no, no, they were. They played the same way we did the other night. Yep. yep. Is that it? Okay. No, I got it. I was going to ask you uh, about Mario. Um, he was obviously recruited for a 4 3 system. Mm -hmm. and now, how is he taken to being a defensive end that's not going to get a ton of numbers? You know what I mean? I mean we we like were a lot of 4 3. We're as much 4 3 as we are 3 4. Okay. We're playing a ton of 4 3. I mean, he played, a, I mean, played almost a half or more the other night 4 3. So those numbers, he will. I mean, that's what he is, and that's he's gonna have numbers and tackles. But the defensive ends, they're not probably gonna put up the same type, like Jordan Warner numbers and the Tank Carradine numbers. Or can't you? You think mm, they can even in this system? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean they can, but well, there goes my story. But, but also those things there. I mean, we're not really that much different. Right. I mean, we're we're not that we're we're more four three than we are three four, right now. I mean, we do at times do that on different loads, but on that number, but uh, we're not that much different. When you're when you're looking at. Uh, you know, incoming freshmen go out recruiting. Um, are you thinking more along the lines of a three-four system or a four-three system, or no, does that, we, how no, much does that we, come into just play? Just different, different, different scenarios, different style of players. Try to get a little bit of everything. It's not that much different. You're recruiting different on the defensive line. It seems like you got more guys who are maybe more versatile in playoffs. Got to. You got to be threes and ones and fives, and when you can do that, it makes a huge difference because it gives you some diversity in your game plan. When teams want to run or where their strength is, whether it's a tackle or tight end or guard, you know, what I mean, just like in the secondary, guys that can not only they just ain't defensive ends, they're not defensive tackles. They able to, they got to be able to do both. They got to be able to do both. Does that also help with injuries and depths? Because when you have a guy go down, you're not necessarily locked into one. Person. Exactly, that in the secondary. Exactly right. You got to be, you got to, you got to be versatile and be able to be able to move and and, and play different spots. It, it's huge. It's critical. You don't have enough numbers if you don't. Incorporating true freshmen like you like you have, how big has that been in developing depth of this program? That's critical. I mean, it, and let you know that you're a freshman in town, and if you're talented enough, you're going to play. So let's recruits know that. But the same, you, you, but you, at the same time, you're taking. You're saving those older guys for later in the year when they don't have to take as many reps in the game and play so much. And it just and then when the injuries occur, you got guys that are ready to play. And how we practice and the things, I think it makes a difference in how we're able to develop these guys. It really does. How big is that to be able to tell to a crew, look, man, I, I got a safety that's a true freshman right now that can play. If you can play, you'll get on the field. And we signed, we, I think we're playing about 14 or 15 of the guys this year we have since we've been here. Right. I mean, we mix them in and play them. And those guys are good players, they can learn. And they do a great job, and like again, the way we practice in two a days by splitting the team in half, it gives them the reps. And then it's because all those guys, it's not ability, it's knowledge that allows them, and we get them enough reps to be able to do it. When you talk to a recruit and their parents, is that that's obviously a legitimate concern on their part? Is where do I fit on the depth chart? Exactly right. You've got all these seniors, but you fit it, show it, and, and have history of showing it mm -hmm. consistently. You, know, you talk about you know, reloading instead of rebuilding. That seems like that's a big part of it. It is because whether a guy gets 10, 12 plays a game, okay, we don't think it, but man, that's a lot. When you add it up over 12 games, that's 100 and some plays. He's been on special teams. That's getting out there in the game and being able to function and do things and get confidence in the, the guys around you and people have confidence in you. And, and you know, it just grows and grows. Whether it's six plays, five plays, 10 plays, 12, it makes a huge difference in the big picture of things down the road. Lamar just talked last week about disguising. Disguising the coverages pre-snap is that something they have a lot of are they freelancing or is that something that you guys are building? No, we do. No, we all do. I mean, you always got to try to you always try to disguise and give different looks and be able to do it. And, and you got to be careful. You can also try to trick yourself. I mean, that that's, that sounds good, but at times you cannot trick yourself. 
But if you've got guys that understand what the timing and the rhythm when to get there, it's, it's, it's a big thing. And again, it's something to make the quarterback hold the ball a split second, make a hesitation, go to off a read. I mean, it's all about affecting the quarterback. You, you don't always have to affect him with rush. You do that more as the young guys get more experience? No doubt. No doubt. Jim, are you happy to go into a 14 playoff next year? Do you think that's the way it should be? Or? I don't know. Well, we can know we can argue over who's four and five. <laughs> so who's two and three? And they go to eight, we argue who's eight and nine. If we go to 16, we argue who's 16 and 17. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't think it's going to end that. I mean, it's good. I, I don't think it's bad. I mean, it gets some kind of playoff. I mean, I still think you have the same issues. About it. To me, it's critical how you pick them, and you don't have the same argument. I mean, you really are. I mean, that's, not, that's never going away. I mean, you do when you pick 68, you're you're mad. Yeah, went 64, now went 66, now we're 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 mad over that. Yeah. So, I mean, but uh, it's not. I mean, it'll create some excitement and be something new. And the game, you know, the game's pretty special. Have you? Did you during the offseason anything have a specific conversation or talk at all with with Nick O'Leary about you know his style of play and what he who he could be and where he is? And not what he really. Needs to do? Not really. Just about. We always talk about with things you do well, things you do poorly, and what we think you need to do and how you need to do it. I don't ever. I mean, where I see he fits, how I think we can use him. I mean, we do that every semester, at the end of every semester. We have meetings with every player on the team. We go everything we think about them, what they, let them evaluate themselves, we evaluate them, where we think they fit and how they fit consistently. Yeah, but we do that with every player. It seems like him and Jameis have a pretty good rapport off, off and on the field. Mm -hmm. Has the off the field stuff kind of helped the way that they've connected on the field? I don't think it hurts. It definitely doesn't hurt. I mean, you, you feel comfortable with the guy and confident in the guy, there's no doubt.